We're here to discuss this book, Small Acts of Resistance, by Steve Cranshaw and his colleague John Jackson. Um, it's a fascinating book. Uh, it talks about little things that people do in societies to make change. And just flicking through, it's Afghans voting for singers in a television show to show that they can exercise their choice. Burmese stringing pictures of oppressive military officers around the necks of stray dogs in Rangoon, and Peruvian women having a mass washing of dirty laundry that helped bring down uh, the quasi-dictator Albert Fujimoro. The foreword is by Vaclav Havel, and he says, it's worth noting this because uh, he was a pioneer of the East European the collapse of communism, the rebellions that took place all across Eastern Europe in 1989 were the result of a series of individual actions by ordinary people which together made change inevitable. These small acts of resistance have had incomparably greater impact than anybody could have predicted. On the panel we've got Steve Cranshaw who we will uh, hear from in a second. We've got Saeed Kamali Degan, an Iranian journalist who writes frequently for The Guardian, the head of the BBC Burmese service, Tintar Sway, and Alice Yukoko, who's going to tell us about small acts of resistance in uh, Africa. What I'd like to do is to ask each of you to give a, a little example. So Alice, perhaps we heard about Eastern Europe and about television sets in prams. In Africa, what are these little signs of resistance? I think one, one I will uh, be doing a dis, uh, disservice, uh, if I don't mention, is the one that of the Liberian women. Uh, that women are the uh, pillar for change. That women, they are peaceful, we do peaceful things. And we stand against quite a lot of, of guns. You can kill us because we fight for our children. Uh, they are our future, so we do everything that we can for them. We saw how in 2003, this was not seen by the world, because this was a time where uh, Iraq was very much on the agenda. But it turned out that the uh, Liberian women were able to uh, force Charles Taylor uh, to talk peace with the opponent. Not them, they didn't, they didn't participate. They just said, well, we're going to defy you. We're going to stand in front of your guns. We're going to stand against everything you have. We're going to fast and we're going to pray, but the killing must stop. And we know that Charles Taylor is now standing trial in The Hague for what he did, and peace came. Who knew that peace would ever come to Liberia, but he did, and it came through simple resistance. Uh, in 2002, I also was able to see the African women in Niger Delta. For a long time, over 50 years, the Niger Delta has been the underdog uh, that was uh, been the world, and yet nobody knew anything about what was going on in the Niger Delta, what the oil companies were doing in the Niger Delta, how our uh, environment has been destroyed in the Niger Delta, how our people are being killed in the Niger Delta. But on the 8th of August, ordinary women decided, right, we want to talk to Shell. If we can't talk to our government, we will talk to Shell. We will stop Shell from doing what Shell is doing. We want to tell Shell that we cannot continue to borrow money to educate our children. Then we begin to borrow money to give them pocket money. So the women took off very early in the morning and went in front of Shell and said, we want to talk. We need to talk. You cannot be operating in our land, and yet you've destroyed our livelihood. So we are going to stand here until you talk to us. Unfortunately, uh, Shell decided to call on the Nigerian government, and they brought <coughs> arms to bear. And it was interesting, because the women, all they had in their hand was just uh, pure water, nylon uh, uh, bags of water. And that was all they had. And the, the, the soldiers came, the armed police came, guns were walking, uh, horse whip was, was at work. But the women said, we are not going to run. There's a particular woman with a child on her back. And he said, I will not run. I'm going to stand here because we need to change things. And it really made a change. Because because of that sim single act, the whole world became aware. And America came, Amnesty International came. And today, we see here 
about the Niger Delta women. Alice, you come from a, 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 a huge canvas of a continent that yes. has a dictatorship on one yes. hand and a democracy next to each other and a complete mess here and there and the other. <laughs> uh, so. Uh, Take what Steve says there. I mean, you have these very original things. I mean, I've been in, in, in Africa and where there's no petrol and there's no cover. There's and the ingenuity no of, the, the, of the people in Liberia that I went through yes. is absolutely fantastic. Mm -hmm. And you wonder, why can't this intelligence be used to create the country? But it's the people, isn't it? Within. Yeah, is it really external influences or is it the people? I think what's happened, because I've just come back from Nigeria uh, in uh, only June here, what people kept asking is, Alice, tell us, is all this campaigning you are doing having an impact outside? So really what they are waiting for is the whole world standing up and saying, leave these people alone. So really, I think in the, for the uh, in case of Africa, you look at Africa, then you look at the leaders that are holding the African people down, they come out, they attend the G20 uh, summit, and they are dealing, dealing with the rest of the world. So the, the African people, the feeling is that, oh yes, uh, the, the leaders are working with the West. So what can we do? So people, and, and of course the resistance, because I've actually taken uh, women on, uh, uh, to charge on the ground. I said, what's going on? You are sitting here. You are sitting quietly. You are waiting for some kind of uh, uh, messiah to come from outside. And they said, but we are resisting. They are killing us. <laughs> so, <laughs> and they said, we are trying, uh, but they are, they are killing us. And people are not hearing about that. So we, we have that. So the issue of Africa, when you, we talk about uh, democracy, Ghana, I've been told last Sunday that people think that there is democracy in Ghana, but there isn't. So people on the ground know differently. They know better as to what is actually happening. But in actual fact, the, the picture that is created outside, and that is what the governments are doing, is very different from what is happening on the ground. Okay, I just, told in, I'd like to Alice, you've, you've faced, you and your group of women have faced mm -hmm. down people with guns on both sides, haven't you? Those yes. that are supporting your cause and those that are against your cause. What, what have you done? Well, the issue of uh, the resistance of women uh, has uh, not really produced much result as we, as we should we really expect it to do. Because what's happened is that when the trouble begins, when the women stand out, uh, we back off. For instance, uh, again in 2003, there were a group of women in the Delta who decided to go in the nude for fear of being attacked by, by uh, arms, they, they stripped themselves. And for two weeks, they were in the bush, uh, <coughs> stuck naked and uh, uh, protesting the actions of, uh, of, uh, of the oil company in the place. And uh, at the end of the day, they backed up because after two weeks, everyone is naked and nothing is happening. Uh, the world is not listening. No one is saying, leave these women now. So in the end, people say, all right, then we're going home. Because if we don't go home, <laughs> we are fighting with mosquitoes here. And we are hungry. <laughs> <laughs> so we have the guns, and it's always said, please stay low. So even you, the students that used to stand up and, and want to take over government and say, well, we, this is our time, we, want to, we don't want guns, everybody backed off because they now tell parents, you better warn your children. <laughs> My name is Dorothy Byrne. I happen to work for Channel 4. I'm not particularly representing them okay. tonight. I would like the, to ask the whole cha uh, channel panel whether they think that small acts from outside can make a difference. Now, if you were to work for a marketing company, you might have listened to everybody tonight and say, to help women or people in Nigeria, what you needed to do was to get naked women to turn up in every country outside the Nigerian embassy. Yes. There is no point to having normal protesting placards. But if in every country nude women turned up, I think that would be noticed, really, wouldn't it? <laughs> I'm not saying I advocate those things. Um, I just um, ask, would they be noticed more than yeah. rather boring yeah. things that organizations do? Yeah. But uh, Alice, sure. yeah. uh, uh, naked women outside embassies, is it the way to go? <laughs> I, I, I feel, I think we'll go, one, we'll talk about uh, the radio. Information is very powerful. Mm. And I think that one of the problems that there is in, uh, that is really serious in Africa, is that there is, we don't have electricity. So we could talk about internet and pulling on the radio 
that you talked about. And I know that there is a, a race, like the houses in, in, in Nigeria, every single one of them have a transistor radio where they can be spoken to so they know exactly what's going on. So on the, on the strength of that, information is power and money is an issue. Because we, women of Africa, we've been uh, toying with the idea. Because women who are abused, women who are trying to resist the, the terrible situation they are in, if, they, if only they can know that the whole world is thinking about them and working with them, they'll be empowered. And of course, that will run a resistance. Hello, good evening. I'm Norbert Stute. I'm, um, <clears throat> well, from Better World Links. Um, my question is, governments and corporate media are not very, um, well, they like to frame issues. <laughs> and they're, they're not very conducive of small acts of resistance. Um, what can be done about it? Uh, would you, these, are, these are oppressive governments or democratic governments? Uh, at the moment, I think about democratic okay. governments. You just rest the microphone. Can go. Um, democratic governments. Alice, you know, a swathe of democratic governments in Africa. Well, I, I'm here to see a democratic government in <laughs> Africa. Because what we have, I think what we need to understand is that what is being uh, brought forward, presented as democracy, really is not democracy. Look at, look at, for instance, Kenya, where people went to the poll, you would say, yes, that would have been a democracy. But when the people voted, Mr. President lost, but uh, swore, swore himself in. So there we are, everybody came, thousand, thousand died as a result of that. And what then happened? There was, uh, an, should we say, an expansion of uh, constitution, and then they created the position of, uh, of uh, prime minister for the loser, so to make peace. We saw it again in Zimbabwe. Now we have, uh, Zimbabwe now have the prime minister. Then you ask, so how has any of this helped those people who actually resisted the, 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 the outcome or the refusal of the loser to leave? How do we push uh, democracy uh, to Africa? They will tell you, no, this is the way, this is African democracy. So, um, but it really is it's an oppressive regime. So it, it's not done because people are afraid of doing it or because they're not clever enough? Well, I think what's happening is that whatever Africa churns out, the world will recognize. From the moment, and this is where we'll go back to the Channel 4 question, uh, well, not for Channel 4, but is it <laughs> when, no, what, we'd ha what needs to happen is that when the rest of the world, the whole world says sorry, we're not happy about this. Perhaps Western government will be slow at recognizing some kind of made-believe African democracy. I don't know what that is. It's, a, it's, a, it's very similar to oppression. So we don't, <laughs> whatever we bring, uh, the West will take. So I think, yes, when everybody gets up and says, sorry, we don't agree with this, then obviously that is going to begin to fuel uh, confidence is going to build confidence within African uh, uh, people, amongst Africans, and then they will have the, 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 the courage, I'll say, to say, right, okay, we don't agree. But right now, everybody says yes. Uh, anyone who comes in, <laughs> they, they are the author of the result. They know the result before it's actually done. Uh, they don't allow other people to vote. So they come out and we're taking it. So that's the way I see it. Now. I've come away with many thoughts, but two images and I want to see if we can get some more. One is of the, the naked women against the machine guns, and the secondly is the, the Barclay Bank teller machines with black and white. They're sort of entrenched in my mind. So I wondered if each of you could encapsulate, and you've only got 15 seconds to do it. If you can't, just pass. Give us an image of your own communities based on this. Said? Well, in Rwanda there was, um, at some point, um, a student activist was arrested and uh, he was speaking in the university and he had to flee the university wearing chador, this black cloth. Mm -hmm. And um, the government tried to humiliate him because of wearing that chador. And response, the bloggers, everybody took their pictures in chador and everybody, all <laughs> men and boys, they took pictures yeah. with chador. They were great. <laughs> which was very great. Yeah. And from Burma, anything to encapsulate a resistance there? It can be imaginary or can have happened? Well, um, the very popular sign now is uh, cross, not to vote in the elections, forthcoming elections. So everywhere there is a cross. And if you see a cross, that means that do not vote. And which means if by not voting, boycotting the elections, that, uh, that means that this election will be a, 
um, whatever the results uh, will mean that uh, it's only the votes that uh, um, the government and the government uh, uh, people who put pressure to vote the government uh, the result of the those votes. Okay. Alice? Africa. Uh, power is corrupting, absolute power is corrupting absolutely in Africa. And what we're doing is uh, take a uh, pull on the issue of uh, civil society. We are strengthening. We believe that the little acts of, of resistance that we have is not making any impact. Because the media, the Western media, need to support us more. Because the media they have there is corrupted. It's being paid to publish for them. Uh, civil society outside need to come together. And to be able to work with us, we're now creating we're working to create uh, uh, women, African Women Commission that other people that kind of raises the profile of the African women across Africa to the international community where it becomes, once we have recognition for that, we're struggling, we're looking for volunteers. We, that will become a simple act of resistance which no African government can work against because then the international community will feed in with us and uh, of course those governments uh, who refuse to hold elections, I know in Cote d'Ivoire, the man is supposed to have been elected, can't go to the poll five years ago, is still there. We go to Uganda, the man is still very much uh, uh, not moving. We go to Zimbabwe, it's the same thing. Nigeria, nobody's voting anybody. So we have all of this. But the women are completely, they can go in the nude, they are doing everything, and people are being killed. You don't, it's not easy to stand in front of a, of a, of a, of a machine that is killing people. People are being killed all the time. So we know that to be able to make the impact that is required, we need to strengthen civil society. So we are hoping to create, we're working to create, I'm lobbying, we're lobbying seriously. Last week we wrote to Her Majesty to please give us the nod for gender transformation for the reformation of Africa, because that's the only thing that can do it. Where the women can stand shoulder to shoulder in New York and say to Nigeria, elect, if it's not working, then look for a peaceful way where everybody can go and have their own place and have peace. Go to Uganda. You have been, you removed uh, Idi Amin, but you've been there now for many, many years, much longer than Idi Amin did. So don't hand over to your son, please move. Go to, to Senegal, please, we are standing against you. You've been there too long. You go to, to Ivory Coast, it is time you call proper election. Go to DRC, the raping of women got to stop. So until women, we raise the profile of women up to that point when the world, the rest of the world can stand with us, where the world media can say, yes, we are, though you are not Winnie Mandela, but we are listening to what you're saying. Nothing will change. Okay, not 15 seconds, but an excellent <laughs> point. <laughs> Steve, 15 seconds, something really clever. Something I, really clever. clever. So let me try to do two into 15 seconds, because the UK is difficult for me. Foreign policy, I would take, and I would put it almost into, into the two words, Sri Lanka, or one word, one phrase, Sri Lanka. If people could go out of this room and have a sense of how bad things are and how little the UK and other governments want to confront what's happening in, yeah. in, the, in Sri Lanka, look at any of the website work of, of Amnesty International, any other organization, crisis group, uh, Human Rights Watch. That is important and to put the pressure on both media, media in the room, but also on the politicians. Sri Lanka is a failure to have yeah. confronted sufficiently. Yeah. A nice story I will take you from not from my own country, but my uh, partially adopted country, as it were, Poland, uh, which I, um, I feel connected to in many ways. Um, going back to uh, when communism was uh, still there, I talked about the pro-communist demonstrations they had. You had to wear something red, lipstick, uh, nail varnish, red shirt, whatever it was. And if you hadn't got any of those, people started buying a kind of pizza which had some ketchup at the end. And the person who was running this was thrilled that she was getting so many customers. She was, and the police said, no, no, you have to shut this down um, because you're selling too many. She said, no, but I'm doing great business. The guy at the front of the queue said, can I just have the ketchup in that case, please? Because all I really need is the ketchup. The guy who just wanted ketchup was arrested, and within a year of that, democracy came to Poland. So I think that's nice Ketchup. <laughs> Thank you. Fantastic panel here. Great ideas.